मिरांडा दी एक टी आप बिट्टी को रखना भी आना for Abhaya and the umpteen number of times that justice has been delayed and has been severely denied. So, there it goes. 7, 1973, a 25-year-old nurse fell prey to a demon fit of rage, quote-unquote, the demon's words. She remained a permanent vegetable for four decades only to die a slow and assisted death. In lieu of justice, a law was passed. Peasant euthanasia was legalized in the soil that she became a part of. It was the year 2002 in the land of the legends when the public mode of transportation became a vessel of combustion. All hell broke loose. They say men die fighting in a war, women get raped. The perpetrators were caught. Listen, my friend, they were caught. They were caught and they were released and they were welcomed with garments and sweets. 10th July 2004, in the jewel of the July 2004, in the jewel of India, in the middle of the night, armed with lust, desire, and vengeance, disguised as counter rebellion, clad in dark green. 10th July 2004, in the jewel of India, in the middle of the night, armed with lust, desire, and vengeance. This guy's a counter rebellion. Clad in dark green and brown, apparitions, apparitions tore her limb from limb. The bare skinned bodies of her 13 mothers parading the palace gate Kangla could not leave her body to lay rest to rest, to rest in peace. A ditto case of no one, no one killed Jessica. In the chilly night of 2012 December, all races welded together. Nirbhaya became a household name. The nation prayed together earnestly, marched together fervently. Her mom deserves a special mention here. You see, Nirbhaya, she mended people's muscles and body aches. We think to mend the thought process of the selected few who in their right mind could say, it was her fault too, right? Ha ha, is the illegal be here? Children are not bad as well. In Katwa, Unnao, Hatra and a million other places that we do not know of or do be. Whose fault? Mankind, men and women both. For growing up and realizing that the world is not what Peter Pan said it was and Santa's gifts under our socks were the big fat lie, the blind leading the blind. But hold on, my dear, hold on, hold on to that flicker of hope where a man corrects a man, a woman corrects a man, a man corrects a woman, and a woman corrects a woman. In the land of Netaji in 2024, uh-uh, our voices won't be now. The whole medical fraternity stands with us. People in all walks of life, young and old, across the globe, stand with us. Humanity stands with us. Logic, a little bit of science, a teeny weeny bit of common sense, stand with us. Day by day, like how a snake shapes its skin, a new truth wriggles out from within. Come on, we do not want to lay more bricks in this wall. We want to break apart this wall. Why this wall in the first place? I know the world is made of a thousand shades of grey, 
but our black and white mission to fight for Abhaya has been lie of the day. So we pat ourselves on the back and we say kudos and we do not back down and we do not surrender and we do not let fear take the upper hand. In the wise words of Tagore, we awaken to that heaven of freedom where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, thought and thought. And we thank them. We thank our patients for their patience. We thank our faculty, the senior doctors, for tirelessly working in the hospitals despite our absence. We thank our families for their unconditional and unwavering support. We thank Abhaya's mom and dad for holding on to this hope that their daughter, the apple of their eyes, sees justice. Most importantly and most ardently, we thank the crowd for their voices. This uproar is for you. This one's for you, Abhaya. You united us. You revealed to the world the leaning tower of a collaterally collapsing system. The loopholes, the lapses, the glitches, the dark side of the moon. You made us question the infringement of the basic right to safety under no threat in a land of free men and women. Thank you.